So I'm going to hand it over to you now, Lee. Lee Chantel. Thank you. Thank you guys, and for all the work you've both done today too, and for the organisers of Cruelty Free Festival. Thanks for coming here. Might not to compete with the noise outside, but we'll get through it. Um, so I've run a website, it's called vivalevegan.net. It's our 10th anniversary this year. And over that time I've noticed a lot of changes. So I'm just gonna talk uh, about uh, various topics today. And um, I'm going to hopefully shorten it a bit that I was going to, because I'd really like some interaction and some great questions from you guys. So make sure you're keeping um, and paying attention. And um, so I've been vegan for 19 years in January and um, I have been, I've noticed a lot of changes over that time, some good and some bad. And um, I decided to talk about veganism and ethics beyond the plate here today because I was part of a panel um, at the Vita Vegan Con, which is a vegan bloggers conference in Portland, Oregon in the States. And I was on a panel with five other people I think. It was a massive panel but we had a great moderator and it was really good and it was really good interaction and we covered a lot of things and that's why I wanted to talk about this today because it was a really great discussion. Um, you can see that on my Viva La Vegan YouTube channel if you wanted to have a look at that panel. It's over an hour long but it's really good and I'm also filming this talk today so that will also be online. <coughs> Um, so I've noticed within especially the last five years the use of the term vegan has been bandied about quite a lot and um, I do think that in a lot of cases the term should be replaced with plant-based because it, veganism um, covers a lot more than just what you eat and I believe that the way the word vegan is being used at the moment really is relating to um, what you eat, losing weight, um, raw till four, high carb, low fat stuff. And because of this, and I definitely think this is a mainstream media issue as well, um, I believe that the term has been watered down and that we definitely are at risk of losing the core ethics of the movement. So that's pretty much what I wanted to go over today. And I'm not going to give you heaps of facts and figures, but I want to just ask questions that we can ask ourselves and see how we can help this going forward. So, um, veganism, I give a lot of talks um, all over the world. I've got some Indonesian friends here too. I love Indonesia, I spoke there quite a bit. And um, I go, whenever I speak, one of the main things that I say about veganism is veganism is not a diet. That's the first thing I say. And normally the second thing is, and it's not a religion, because some people might get confused. Now, vegan means that we don't consume animal flesh, we don't consume animal byproducts, we don't consume animal secretions, anything from an animal, but it also covers so many different things, including cosmetics, clothing, events, businesses, and such that we do or do not choose to give our money to or to have like in line with our ethics. And for myself, veganism to me is ethical guidelines by which I live by and a lot of other people live by as well. And it's my way of being able to lead by example to promote peace, love and compassion to others. And this um, veganism to me encompasses everything that I believe in in regards to consciousness raising. So not just consciousness raising, but also non-oppression, non-objectification, and anti-consumerism. So they're all quite important to me. So for me, I originally went vegan due to animal rights and ethics, but I'm also interested in other things, like feminism. I was a feminist before I became vegan, and that's very important to me. Um, and not just feminism, human rights in general. I'm also interested in environmental rights and many other social justice issues. And um, veganism is really great. Veganism is awesome, but it's one step. And don't get overwhelmed by all the stuff that exists, but just know that there's so many other steps that we can go towards and so much more we can do. So. 
My question, I guess, today is if veganism is just one form of consciousness raising and one form of putting compassion into action, do you think that veganism is enough to satisfy our ethics? And another thing I want to talk today about is intersectionality. And I'm not sure if people understand what that word means. So I'm just going to break it down into the basics. And there's a couple of different meanings online, but the one that I'm going to focus on today is that to me and what I'm talking about today, intersectionality relates to the fact that instead of seeing various forms of oppression and discrimination as separate, as in one entity, it's all about seeing the links and working with other social justice movements. And this, I believe, is really important so we can all move forward. So, in case you're not aware, some, some examples of that intersectionality addresses include such things as racism, sexism, speciesism, homophobia, ableism, and classism. Now, I'm not gonna carry on with all these words that people don't know about or we don't understand too much, so don't freak out. But, one of the things that I believe is that we all need to be aware of these things at the very least. Yes, it's overwhelming to know everything about all these things, but let's be aware, let's be open to always learning more about them. So I believe that the vegan and the animal rights scene is primarily seen and primarily marketed, especially by the mainstream media, as white middle class. And I think there needs to be way more focus on people outside of that very narrow margin. You know, we don't all need to spend a lot of money to be vegan. We all don't need chia and quinoa. I love those. But we don't need to be having them. We could survive on beans and rice if we wanted to. So, how can we promote veganism in a more inclusive way that focuses on race, class, gender issues, food security, as well as animal rights. <laughs> now, as much as we want animals to have rights, the majority of people in the world do not. They don't think that this is necessary whatsoever. And there's, as much as you can agree with certain groups or you can agree with certain people, I'm the same with a lot of animal rights, vegan groups. I don't 100% agree with any of them that exist, to be honest. But there's always something that these groups do that you can use that's of value and that will give value to other people. So some examples of that would be undercover investigations, fact sheets, recipes and videos. A lot of people put a lot of time and energy and money into these things. It's great to be able to share those things. And we need to find common ground with people. When we're talking to someone about veganism, we want to find the common ground. What are your interests? What are the things you're interested in? Um, what things motivate you? That's how we get conversations starting and that's how we get some people to be interested in veganism. So this is really important in finding common grounds with the other movements that exist. Now, I think a really good um, group to look at is the LGBTQ community. Now, there's a lot of allies that LGBTQ community has. Not everyone who supports what they do or they believe in is LGBTQ. But how many allies do they have? Now, somehow, I don't have all the answers. Um, we need to work on attracting people to our movement more. Attracting people, that's the key term. And that way when we're attracting more people who aren't vegan, who aren't interested in animal rights, but are our allies or who see some benefit for all of us for these things, that's how we're going to amplify our message. And we need to be 
supporting and participating in other social justice issues and we need to support their causes as well. Now ownership of words like vegan, feminist, environmentalist, I'm sure a lot of you as I say those words have images that come into your minds of what those particular people are and that has come from years and years of hearing those terms and a lot of negative things about them. But the ownership of these words is changing all the time. And, you know, like I said before, there's a lot more people that are saying they're vegan that just means about their diet. And, I, you know, that really annoys me. I don't care if you're high carb, low fat, ruddy run. Um, you know, I have, I find it hard and uncomfortable sometimes when I have way more in common with someone who's a meat eater that cares about human rights and other social justice issues than I have with someone who's posting high carb, low fat photos on Instagram every two minutes. <clears throat> and yeah, I have a bit of a problem with the high carb, low fat people. Um, and I think all of us here today, we're privileged in a lot of ways. You know, we've all been able to pay money to attend this event, to travel to this event, afford to purchase a variety of things at this event, foods, goods, clothing, and we understand each other. All of you, hopefully, can speak English in, in enough of a way to understand what I'm saying now. Some people can't actually choose not to eat food. So just think about that for a second. Some people who really struggle to feed their family or to feed themselves in countries not like ours, in Western cultures, have no choice what they eat. And if they're going to choose something, they're, not, they're going to choose what to eat, not what to eat, not what not to eat. Some people cannot afford to buy vegan clothes, vegan shoes. Some people can't access transport or public transportation. Some people can't read the information or hear the information online. And it's important to be aware that we all have choices, but some people have much better choices than others. And we need to be entirely mindful of this. And I think by presenting solutions to a problem, it makes issues more manageable. But just because your solution to something is a particular thing does not mean that's another person's solution. For example, if I say um, people harming animals, I don't want people to harm animals, your, your solution, well, my solution as well, would be, okay, well, don't buy animal products, don't support those sort of things or palm oil production. People would say, don't buy palm oil products. But how many people could do that 100% of the time? How many people are willing to do that? How many people see that as necessary? And remember, at best, as vegans, we're one to 2% of the population, at best. And other people have other priorities. <coughs> and what I was talking about before about linking people with what they're passionate about, we need to find out other people's passions and their motivations. And this is how we can plant seeds of change in their heads. Whether they care about diet, environmental stuff, animals, gardening, working out, there's so many different reasons, so many great reasons to become vegan and stay vegan. And humans are animals too, and we seem to forget about this a lot. Everyone's like, oh, I love animals, but I'm going to be mean to everyone I know on Facebook. So we all need to learn more about each other and the world around us. Um, for me, all of the systems of oppression need to be changed. 
and there's only 24 hours in one day. So I'm not saying we all need to do this, 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 because it's just completely overwhelming, really, the amount of information out there. And the goals of oppression are always the same, no matter who is being oppressed. So we need to remember these things. We need to focus on learning new things and focus on being compassionate. We need to focus on understanding where someone else has come from. We need to focus on the things that are most personal to us and that we're most passionate about and that we're best at communicating. This is the first step. Focus on those things and promote and communicate this. But always be willing to learn more because there's always something we can all do better. And we're all on our own life paths. So the best thing I've noticed in my almost 20 years as a vegan is to lead by example and be consistent. That's the best thing you can do. Focus on finding the things that connect us and rather than what we disagree on. And just remember all these little steps, they still get to the same place. But different steps and different actions may work for other people better. Now I'm just going to go through some examples of oppression um, that are linked to various movements. And I just want you to have a think. I know it's a bit late in the afternoon, but I want you to use your brains for a bit. And I just want you to think about what they relate to. So does this relate to feminist issues? Does this relate to human issues, food security issues, animal rights? Just have a think about that when I'm going through this. If you're not aware of them, um, even if you are aware of them, do a bit more research, find out some more things about them. So one example is dairy cows being forced to become pregnant and their babies taken away from them. Profits created for the dairy industry and huge subsidies for these industries. And an example in the US, dairy, like as in milk, is given to children at school, with the majority of children of colour being lactose intolerant. That's one example. Another example is multinational companies, fast food places, alcohol stores, all put into low socioeconomic areas and without people who have good public transport to be able to go outside of those areas. Another example is gas companies, mining companies, technology companies, clothing companies sharing or showing their dominion and their control by using and abusing the earth, our animal friends, indigenous cultures, people, all for money, and just to get more money, and because they have money. Another thing, being dismissive of people who use effective online advocacy because they aren't mentally or physically able to attend protests or demos. So they're just a couple of things I'd really like you all to think about. And I'd like you to find out some more information on a few other things. For example, the process of growing, producing, packaging and transporting your favourite vegan foods. Have you thought about food security? Have you thought about GMO, organic food, in-season, locally, locally grown products? Have you, have you thought about how far your vegan packaged food has traveled? Have you thought about if the people working in your favorite vegan restaurant are getting paid a fair wage? What about the people who make the clothes that you wear or the shoes that you wear? What language do you use to promote veganism? This is a big thing for me, actually. What sort of words do you use? What sort of terms? What sort of phrases? For example, do you use a lot of fat-shaming words? 
do you use racist language when you're talking about other countries and cultures? Are you using trigger words that might actually upset someone truly? There's some really good um, websites and groups online that I strongly suggest you check out. And here's a few that I love. There's Sister Vegan Project, Food Empowerment Project, and Vegan Feminist Network. So I'd really like you to have a think about these things, mull on them for a while, do a bit of research. And I'd really like us to move forward with the movement, to focus on things that connect us with other movements, focus on learning things from other movements, how we can move forward, how we can move forward together, how we can promote a better world, how we can all use some consciousness raising. I'd like us to focus on education and planting seeds instead of converting. I'd like us to focus on encouragement instead of judgment. And remember that we're all connected, our blood, earth, sea trees, all connected. And you may be the only vegan that someone comes into contact with. What you do and what you share and what you do, it all reflects our whole movement. So remember this and act like it. Just be the best version of yourself that you can be and be the best vegan you can be. Um, if you want to find out any more information, you can see my website, vivalavegan.net, and I'm across all social media channels too, so Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and um, I'm also here promoting my Vegan Athletes book that I'm just doing crowdfunding for, so have a look at veganathletesbook.com. I've got 111 vegan athletes I've interviewed from all over the world and my good friend Robert Cheek who just spoke did the foreword and um, I'd really like to hear some questions so I've left a bit of time for that. Who'd like to start? I had a question before from someone about why I went vegan in the first place so maybe I'll start with that um, I When I was in year 10 at school my family and I we used to have leg of lamb every Saturday night and um, I knew it was a lamb's leg, because that's what it's called. And I asked my mother one night, what's, what's that piece of the leg of lamb that my sister and I both liked? She said, that's the Achilles tendon. Look down at my foot, I've got one of those as well. And I made that connection between the life that I have and the death I was about to consume. And from that moment, I went, whoa, not doing that, not into that sort of stuff. And I stopped eating red meat then. And then we had a camp in at school where city kids go to the country and look after animals for a month. And so we looked after chickens, so I wasn't going to eat any chickens after that. And then I became vegetarian first because I didn't want to kill anyone, I didn't want to harm anyone. So when I found out about the egg and the dairy industries and how they hurt a lot of people, cause a lot of harm, and are probably worse than death in a lot of cases for these animals, I became vegan. And so that, yeah, almost 19 years ago. So it's a long time. And yeah, a lot easier now to be vegan. Could this group come together if they could get along to form a really, really powerful political <coughs> Uh, alternative. I know the Animal Justice Party and Mark Pearson is in, but what are your thoughts on that? Well, definitely. I think I think we can definitely um, if that happens, um, and I think that's sort of like what I was talking before about creating allies and forming allies. That's a really good example of having that happen because not many people. Um, that's, that's me. Um, not not many people um, actually. Be, were vegan who supported that. There was a hell of a lot of people who weren't actually vegan who were very anti live export. And um, that, you know, that's amazing to see. We need to be going to the mainstream more. We need to be finding these things that actually are encouraging people to come on our side. You know, come on our side because I feel that um, a lot of the movement can be very aggressive, very judgmental, and very, oh, you're not fully vegan. 
no, I only hang out with men, like that sort of thing. So somehow we need to change that. And um, those things, and honestly, I think all these different groups that you mentioned, everyone's doing the best that they can in the best way they know how with the, the amount of resources that they have. So we all have to remember that. Um, and we can, you know, anyone can complain about people doing things when they've never done it themselves. There needs to be more people who are doing things and getting things done using your skills, using your talents, things you're passionate about and can communicate the best. We need to be doing more of that and less of the judging of other people who you don't agree with. General, I think it's a responsibility to vegans if they hear things like say if there's fat shame or ageism or ableism that they call it out immediately. I agree. I think it's our responsibility to draw attention to the other things that aren't being drawn attention to, which we do ignore quite consistently. And often it's not intentional, it's accidental, especially like ableist language. And it's something that we need to, in the most positive way possible, draw attention to mm -hmm. and stop it immediately. Yep, okay. Do, do what, you know what, what, what though? Can, can I just say? Yes, certainly. Do you know what? Like, you go into any vegan forum, and if you're on the vegan forums on Facebook, then you know they can be really volatile spaces. <laughs> and if somebody <laughs> mentioned something about palm oil, mm. look out. Because <laughs> you want know, the people who are like vegan but happy to eat the palm oil, and the people who were vegan and not happy to have the yeah. palm oil, and the people who were vegan and happy for you to make whatever choice you want yeah. to make. And everyone's like, and you just oh, don't go there. And then mention abolitionist. Oh, exactly. Look, oh, we have a question. Oh, sorry, that brings me to my question. What's your take on palm oil? Well, I actually did a video about that one, actually, because I have. It's, I mean, it's technically not from an animal, but it is taking something from an animal. Well, from yeah, and I, you know, I've been to Asia. I went. I remember the first Ooh. time I was in Malaysia and looking at these palm oil trees everywhere. And I said to my driver, "Gee, that's beautiful. What's that tree?" And he goes, "Oh, that's palm oil." And I'm like, "Ooh, okay." And it was vast amounts, like for the, as far as I could see. And I personally um, try not to consume palm oil products, but that doesn't mean I'm 100% palm oil free. And I've got a friend who is palm oil free. She gets in my ear quite often, I must tell you. And I think it's just doing the best you can, like, you know, um, what, like, you know, more harm, more good, less harm, I think, is maybe hopefully what we can all take from this. And, you know, I, as much as I can be judgmental, as you've heard, um, <laughs> and um, trying not to be, and trying to be, yeah, everyone has their own steps, everyone can do this. I, you know, um, she can do palm oil free, she's quite happy to do that, whereas my other two friends, we were eating the, the Nana's pies or whatever, they were had palm oil free on them, because yeah. so we wanted to pie. But you know, you have it's yeah, just your level. Always making progress. Yeah, exactly. And what you know, what are you what what's more important to you or something? But you're right, you're not you're not killing an animal. You're not um, then but they're dying because of those products. I just wanted to mention about <laughs> palm oil too. Something I said in that video I did was if you're saying to someone, go vegan and get rid of all these things, oh plus I want you to also do all this stuff that has yeah. palm oil or has yeah. palm oil products completely overwhelming for most people, including a lot of vegans. So you have to be really careful with that. And I think it's small, like a small step. Oh, hey, did you know about palm oil? Like I know an example I'd probably give is I'm on the committee of the Worldwide Vegan Bake Sale and we have bake sales every year around uh, Easter-ish, April is that. And um, a lot of, so it's mainly a US based thing and um, a lot of people use this brand over in the States called Earth Balance which is like a Nutella but it's more buttery. So a lot of people, um, we had some complaints from people who said you shouldn't be promoting Earth Balance on the website because it has palm oil in it. There's a lot of drama around Earth Balance with having palm oil in it. It is um, a more sustainable palm oil. Um, but I said that we need to add something at the bottom. Look, people use this product, but did you know it contains palm oil? There's some other alternatives. So something just like that, maybe, where you're, you're you know, letting people be aware of it, but giving them options so they can make their own choice. I yeah, think that's I, I just what you mean, like in general. Red meat, white meat, for them. Yeah. Well, I, I think food security and how food's produced is very important, especially because, you know, I think about some of the food that I, I used to eat or some of the food that's available that's come from UK, US and 
you know, the packaging, plastic, that's not going to break down, food miles, people who've made it. Just because it's vegan doesn't mean it covers other ethical areas, you know? And I think we need to be a bit aware of that and just open to the fact, hey, we're not perfect. <laughs>